Very good. Now, Lawrence, I saw you giggle when uh, my, my friend Tim here was mentioning how handsome I was. But when you think of me, clearly the, the word is eternally handsome. That's the phrase that, 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 that comes to mind, yes? <laughs> now, eternally handsome. Mel, that's, that's about right, wouldn't it be? Thank you. Thank you very much. So I say eternally handsome because I have a quote here from uh, a picture of Dorian Gray. I'm a big, I'm a big uh, Oscar Wilde uh, lover, and I have uh, here a little quote from Dorian Gray. Does anyone know Dorian Gray? Yes? Eternally handsome, just like me. E every year, just getting slightly better looking. Um, but I'm going to read this to you because it's going to set up what I'm going to talk about today. So words, mere words, how terrible they were, how clear and vivid and cruel. One could not escape from them, and yet what subtle magic there was in them. They seemed to be able to give plastic form to formless things and to have a sweet music of their own, as sweet as the viol or the lute. Me words, was there anything, sorry, me words, was there anything so real as words? Uh, now, clearly, uh, Oscar Wilde would be very, very uh, uh, thrilled to have such beautiful uh, reading of, of such pedigree uh, read with such a, a gorgeous Australian accent. Uh, I had attempted uh, to, to do that in a, in a posh British accent, and I was actually practicing on the, on the way over. It takes me about an hour to get to Abbasley, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll try and read that in a, in a fancy uh, British accent, sound like I come from Eton College or Harrow or something like that. But I thought, no, I'll probably embarrass myself. So I just did it as, as me. But today I'm going to talk a little bit about that concept of words. And one of the big challenges that we have with AI is, yeah, when we set an assessment or when we set a task or we set a, an essay that we're, we're sending home or having children write, what is the risk that they're going to jump on Copilot, ChatGPT, something like that, and have AI generate the words for them. So how do we uh, ensure we have quality, authentic, rigorous assessment in this world of AI? And that's what we're going to dive in uh, a little bit today. So I thought I'd start with a little bit of a, a, a difference. Um, to begin with, though, uh, I'm going to ask you, take your phones out, uh, have a quick scan of that QR code, because we had uh, a beautiful acknowledgement of country at the start of today, and I'd love you to scan there, just enter VR uh, when you see that little button that says enter VR, and I'll know you're good students who have done what they're told, because suddenly you'll be moving your phones around in a 360 degree look, and you'll be up and at the back and all that sort of stuff, and you immediately will be transported and taken to gorgeous Uluru, that absolutely lovely uh, red sand, that soil, that rich colour of Uluru, that blue sky, all that sort of stuff. And that's the beauty of uh, uh, digital tools. We can immediately, without too many uh, instructions, I can give you a taste, I can immerse you and take you somewhere that you have previously not been before. We are digital skills, digital pedagogy, digital practice, and allows us to enable learning experiences that were previously impossible. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And I wanted to do that in a little bit of a fun way because when I do uh, an acknowledgement of country, I like to say that, you know, we are acknowledging that our Indigenous brothers and sisters were the first educators on this land. They were the first teachers who shared wisdom and knowledge from generation to generation. And we all walk in those same footsteps sharing uh, knowledge and wisdom from generation to generation. We are part of a long line of many thousands of years of tradition, and we are fortunate enough to have this uh, digital pedagogical skill set uh, to really immerse children, take them to the middle of Australia and, and see this gorgeous thing. But um, does anybody know, or does anyone want to have a guess, and I've got a feeling that you might actually know this tool, Lawrence, but um, does anybody know where perhaps I grabbed that little... Um, that, 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 that immersive sort of 360 degree image from? Anybody know? 360 cities, yes, um, spot on. Anything that you're doing um, for totally free, you can jump on the 360 cities. If you're doing something about France, you're a history teacher, all that sort of stuff, you wanna um, take your students around the Coliseum, um, bang, go in there, type that, grab that, put the URL up, share that, and they can 
have a 360 degree look around. And just like you were very good students and I saw everybody smiling and hands up and having a bit of a giggle because suddenly we were uh, looking at Uluru and looking at all that gorgeous color and you were immediately immersed into my mini lesson here today. Without me explaining anything, you're able to do that uh, with your students as well. Um, so I'm actually going to talk very, very quickly about my favorite or my current favorite uh, Adobe tool and it is Adobe Podcast. Now, Adobe Podcast is currently in beta mode, so uh, it's totally free. I'm not sure where it's gonna sit within the suite uh, when, it, when it comes out. But if we're going to talk about solutions for effective use of, of uh, assessing students uh, and assessing their understanding, uh, and we're not risking, okay, take home, write me a report, write a short answer thing, do an essay, whatever, um, then, this is probably one of the best ways to do it. Now, let me explain why. Uh, we had a mention before of one of the features up there. You can see Enhanced Speech um, Studio, and obviously it's got a little bit of a mic check. Enhanced Speech. Uh, anyone in the, in the crowd um, actually used Enhanced Speech? What it does is I could be... So one of the reasons why podcasting has been diabolically challenging in a school environment is we need a, a, a nice fancy room. We've got to have some soundproofing. You really can only have one or two kids at a time. It's a whole big procedure uh, and you have to have the skills, you have to have the patience, you have to have, have the technological know-how. With this, because it has the enhanced speech feature in it, you can be in a noisy classroom with multiple students recording on their devices uh, simultaneously, and I could do some explicit teaching. I might be in a biology lesson, and I've done a, a cellular division or whatever it might be, and I want to get a pulse check assessment at that point in time. How well have my students understood that explicit lesson right there? I want to know what they have done, or I want to be able to assess after a, 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 a block of work or a couple of lessons or whatever that might be, and all we need to do is go into Adobe Podcast, uh, we hit record, it will record, it will listen to the main speaker, it will pick up the uh, background uh, talking and noise and all sorts of stuff like that. It will then be able to use the AI of, and it's AI, they'll be able to use the AI within enhanced speech to filter out who is the, what's the main voice and what's the background noise. It'll delete that background noise and only keep that main voice. So at the ending of it, you will hit um, end, it will do its little thinking, uh, do the uh, um, deleting, and it will actually come up within the studio, it will come up with a live transcript, so a real-time transcript of your audio, and it will be just what you have spoken. Now, if I'm reading that and I, and I got stuck on a word and I went, oh, 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 hey, sir, how do I say that word? And then sir tells me and I go, oh, really, cellular division, not mellular division, uh, I can actually then go up to the where the studio is, I can go up to the, the text and literally click edit that word. It will crop that out of that audio file and I can say that sentence again and it will reinsert that, that audio into that sentence so I can build upon uh, that. And I can do that in class live with 20 other students recording their podcasts at exactly the same time. I can have a nice 15 minute time limit so it can be nice, short, succinct. Then they can hit it and they can actually share the live link with the teacher or they can um, download the MP3 file and, and then upload that to your, your LMS and, and, and all that sort of stuff. It's even got built into it if you want to have like uh, intro music, outro music, all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm going to be doing a session, a workshop later today and actually show you how to use it. And we'll make that and, and we're going to have a little, I'm not sure what the time is uh, on that, but later today, my, my workshop is literally getting hands on and making uh, an Adobe podcast uh, example and you will be blown away because I will literally ask everyone in there to be as noisy as possible and I'll do a little talk like this and it will pick up my voice. So in a noisy classroom, we can have direct uh, uh, assessment of understanding in amongst everything and so we can guarantee authentic student voice, authentic uh, uh, assessment in a time and a period where having that is a little bit potentially nefarious when we send stu students home to have uh, some time of written work. Now, um, Chris, I put this slide in. So uh, what you'll be able to do there, if there's uh, my, my LinkedIn, if you, if you want to grab me on any of my socials there. Um, but thanks so much, everybody, uh, for um, being able to... Um, you're looking, you're thinking, you're trying to figure it out. 
I did try and plan a joke and no one's laughed just yet. You got it, sir. And that's a question mark on you. I'm not going to point out. There's a question mark on you for knowing what that is. I did try to plan a little joke. Chris has set me up. We're having a bit of a joke the other day. And I did put in, have a bit of a think of where that, where that might be. But thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Brett Salakis.